Will the stock market go up from here? Watch the rest of this video to see if there is evidence this might just happen. In this video, I'm going to discuss the recent labor market report, the change in Fed expectations, and what our metrics are telling us about what's happening in the markets right now. Uh, the numbers are out, 372,000, 372,000 on non-farm payrolls. Okay, let's dig a little deeper. On the private payrolls, 381,000, much better than expected. Manufacturing, 29,000, also much better than expected. The unemployment rate remained at 3.6, one, two, three, four. Fourth month in my memory of 3.6. Interest rates, well, interest rates have moved up, and that really is the litmus test. The market says that this number is pretty good. We're now at 307 in a 10 year, which was kind of half dancing with 3%. So, how did this hot jobs report affect what the market thinks the Fed might do when it meets later on in July? Well, let's take a look. So, if we go over to investing.com and take a look at the Fed rate monitoring tool, this is a little bit hard to understand, but I'll show it a different way that's a little bit easier. Let's look at this another way. I think this is a little easier to understand, a little bit more visual. So, in the previous week, there was a 13.8% chance that the Fed would increase rates by 50 basis points or half a percent, and an 86.2% likelihood that the Fed would raise rates by three quarters of a percent or 75 basis points. On Thursday, it became higher likelihood that there would be a three quarters of a percent increase. And then on Friday, the, the markets basically felt there was no chance of a half percent increase. You see the blue line went away. A 92% chance that there would be a three quarter percent increase. And now the markets are believing there's an 8% chance that there will actually be a 1% increase by the Fed in the target rate. Well, how did the markets react to this hot jobs report? Let's take a look. We're looking at the S&P 500, the SPY ETF, for Friday, July 8th. And you can see the red line is the previous close. I just put that in there to give us a point of reference. And you can see the market started out well below the previous close. So it started out down. It tried to rally. People sold into that rally. And then people started buying the dip. And it went up and it actually was pretty positive right here earlier in the morning. Then it sold off again. People bought the dip again. We had another rally and then it kind of faded out into the close. Um, ended up just a little bit down for the day, almost flat. So this really isn't that bad for a hot market report like that. Now let's take a look at our proprietary metrics after this hot jobs report. And this will give us some indication of maybe how the markets are responding to this. So I'm going to start out with the NASDAQ 100. If you've seen this graph before or these graphs before, the black line is the price of the instrument. So in this case, the, the triple Qs, which are the NASDAQ 100. The orange line, orange solid line, is the selling pressure. And the solid gray line is the buying pressure. And then these other dashed lines are just two month and one month trend lines. So if we look at this, you can see, first of all, in the price action, the NASDAQ 100 has had a nice rally going on here. And in fact, uh, it, it, went, it peaked out here, pulled back, and now it's above this previous peak, which I see is good. And you can see as it was going up, the buying pressure was above the selling pressure here. And then the selling pressure came up for a bit and, as this pulled back. And now the buying pressure is above the selling pressure again, even after that hot jobs report. In fact, this closed up on Friday, so not a bad thing. And typically, higher risk stocks lead us out of the bottom. Just keep that in mind. Now, if we look at the S&P 500, SPY, you can see this hasn't done as well. The selling pressure has, was way above the buying pressure for quite a while here, even as this rallied. It sort of tried to flip here, didn't quite make it. It, but now the buying pressure is above the selling pressure. But this closed down a little bit on Friday. Now let's look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So these are typically your more value stocks. And I would expect these to not do as well as the NASDAQ coming out of the bottom. And in fact, you see that as the case. Selling pressure stayed well above the buying pressure all the way along here. And in fact, it's still above the buying pressure. 
and you can see that the performance hasn't been nearly as good as the NASDAQ 100. Let's take this to a little bit more of an extreme. So if we look at the ARK Innovation Fund, we look at the innovation stocks. These are the highest risk stocks. At least that's the way the market looks at them. Kathy Woods would argue these are the lowest risk stocks. But you can see that these bottomed out way back here. And we had very nice buying pressure above the selling pressure here, flipped over a little bit there. And now the buying pressure is once again above the selling pressure. So this is a really good indication that we may have seen the bottom in the market. While we're looking at these oscillators, let's also look at how interest rate sensitive instruments like government treasuries responded. So you can see here for the intermediate treasuries, IEI, uh, there's been a very nice rally here going on. Uh, and in fact, the, the selling pressure was above the buying pressure. But that flipped back here, flipped back here for a little while, but then definitely flipped here. And you can see the buying pressure has been well above the selling pressure. But on Friday, uh, these, on Thursday and Friday, the, the price of IEI dropped, probably in anticipation. And then when the report was released, they responded by dropping, meaning that the yields went up. And you saw that in the CNBC report at the beginning of this. Now, where this will go after this, who knows? Let's look at a little bit longer term. These are seven to 10 year government treasuries. So again, very nice rally here. Um, what's interesting is, yeah, the price has dropped on Thursday and Friday, but look at the buying pressure. It just kept increasing. So people are buying into these uh, more than selling, although the price was dropping. So we'll see how this goes next week. Uh, let's go even longer duration, TLT. So again, very nice rally here. Big drop Thursday and Friday. Longer duration, more volatility. But you can see the buying pressure is still above the selling pressure, although it is heading down here and the selling pressure is heading up. So we'll see where this goes next week. Now let's take a look at gold. Now gold is typically a hedge for inflation. And you can see the price action has just been horrible. It's just fallen off here. And you can see that in the selling pressure. Selling pressure just going through the roof here. So gold really didn't respond very well to this very hot jobs report. And you can see it went up a little bit on Friday, but not really any big move in gold. So where does this leave us looking forward into next week? Well, if you watch the video in the card up in the corner, Jeff and I had an interview last week and we talked through a lot of these issues. It looks like we may have seen the bottom. Tech stocks, risky stocks are coming out of the bottom quickly. That's typically what they do. Uh, it's going to hinge a lot on the CPI and PPI reports next week. If the CPI report moderates and people believe the Fed won't raise interest rates as much as they appear they're going to raise them, that could be really good for the markets. We could see a real big run up here. It's just really difficult to tell. So we'll have to wait and see. Sorry, I don't have a better, more definitive answer than that. But that's what, that's what I've got. No crystal ball. Just what I'm seeing right now. I'm Calvin Rose. Thank you for watching today. If you like this video, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you won't miss another upcoming episode of Invest Smarter. That's all for now.